Good afternoon. I'd like to start by making some brief remarks in my national capacity. Um, first of all, about the unanimous adoption this morning of Security Council Resolution 2565 on the COVID vaccination ceasefire in areas of conflict. Uh, this was co-sponsored by 112 member states and will help bring vaccines to 160 million people in conflict-afflicted areas or displaced by conflict. There are three key, I think, provisions in the resolution. Uh, the first is increasing the funding for COVAX. The second is overcoming the logistical barriers to delivering vaccines to people in conflict-afflicted uh, areas or displaced by conflict. And the third is calling for local ceasefires so that we can bring vaccines to people who are in conflict areas. Obviously, uh, each of these situations will require further negotiations at country and even at field and local level. Uh, and we've asked the Secretary General to report back to the Security Council uh, where they encounter barriers doing this. This is something I think that needs obviously consistent international effort. This is a first step, of course, but the fact that we have unanimous Security Council agreement and co-sponsorship from 112 member states, I think, is a strong testament to the international commitment to seeing this happen. Uh, second, if I may, just a few words on Myanmar. Uh, I made a statement in the General Assembly this morning in my national capacity, which again condemned the coup called for the release of detainees and the restoration of democracy. And I'd also like to pay tribute to the courage of my Myanmar colleague, uh, the PR, for his statement. And I think we see the international community's efforts, the UN, the G7, and in particular ASEAN, uh, continuing towards trying to restore democracy to Myanmar. Thank you, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, on two of the things you've mentioned, on, on vaccines, how do you operationalize the ceasefires? How are you going to go forward to actually make this happen? And on Myanmar, um, very powerful in the, in the GA today, particularly, as you say, the permanent representative in Myanmar, does that now push the ball back in the Security Council's court? And what do you think the Security Council should do next? Thank you. In terms of operationalizing the ceasefire, uh, I think, as I say, it will be on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, and so we'll have to work through each individual situation. But I'm much encouraged by the example, for example, of what we managed to do in Afghanistan in 2001, when in a two-day period, 35,000 humanitarian workers vaccinated 5.7 million children against polio. So on a case-by-case -case basis, these things are possible, and that's the next stage uh, there. Uh, in terms of Myanmar, uh, yes, we've had the General Assembly debate today. We've also had activity uh, in the G7 this week, and also ASEAN efforts are ongoing. Uh, but there is consideration about what the Security Council will do next, building on uh, the statement that we agreed on the 4th of February at the beginning of our Security Council presidency. Uh, thank you, Madam Ambassador. On a, a follow-up on Myanmar. The Myanmar ambassador more broadly asked for stepped up immediate international action, not just by the Security Council, to reverse the coup. Uh, what other actions do you see that the international community could take to actually pressure the military to reverse its action. Thank you. <clears throat> so in my statement in the General Assembly today, I gave three examples of things. Uh, the first is the UK has now sanctioned the whole of the uh, military uh, coup leaders in Myanmar, and I called on other countries to consider similar sanctions. Uh, the second is the UK has now suspended all trade promotion with Myanmar, um, in particular wanting to stop any possibility of doing trade with the military-owned uh, companies. And again, I encourage other countries to consider that measure. And thirdly, the UK has conducted a review of our aid to Myanmar, 
uh, to make sure that none of it is reaching uh, the military coup leaders, but we're still trying to get humanitarian aid into Myanmar to the people. So I think those are three measures that some other countries have already considered and implemented, and others may also wish to do so, as well as the ongoing uh, international efforts. We heard today in the Security Council from the chair of ASEAN, uh, Brunei Dar es Salaam, talking about the efforts that ASEAN leaders are making uh, to try and restore uh, democracy to Myanmar. Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, you said that a majority of countries had agreed to a ceasefire for the humanitarian purpose of the vaccine. This is extremely encouraging. It's like the Christmas truce in World War I. If that agreement on these grounds could be obtained, can you see any way in which this can be expanded and built upon to increase uh, agreement on de-escalation in, in military zones? I realize this sounds utopian, but it's a first step. Indeed, it's a first step, and we were very encouraged by the 112 countries who co-sponsored the resolution, and we'll be looking forward to working with them in order to implement it properly. Could it be broadened out? Uh, I think that would be a very promising step indeed, but it'll be uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, and I think alongside uh, other efforts that the Security Council is making uh, to bring ceasefire and to do peace building in conflict-afflicted areas. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.